Hello, welcome to week four of this exciting online course on youth employability and entrepreneurship, the role of digital economy delivered by IDEP of the UNACA based in Dakar, Senegal. This promises to be a week of fun and I congratulate you one more time for completing module three and the previous modules. This week, we will be looking at evidence-based youth policies. I look forward to learning from you and also sharing our experiences with you under this course. Thank you and welcome on board. As I said, this week's focus is on evidence-based youth policies, and the session will discuss youth policies and the development agenda with special focus on African Youth Decade Plan of Action, the DPOA, the Youth Swap, the World Program of Action for Youths, as well as case studies on evidence-based youth policies. We will also be advocating for harmonization in cases where policies that are youth friendly exist and if they don't exist, the development of strong and inclusive youth friendly policies that capture the core needs and aspirations of young people. So at the end of this session, learners would have understood how to effectively integrate youth policies in organizational and national development plans. We've seen that youth development has been a topical issue for many years and has been prioritized in various legal and policy frameworks, especially Agenda 2030 and Agenda 2063. According to the United Nations in 2016, Young people continuously face structural and societal barriers to full and effective participation in political, economic, and community life that place them at increased risk of poverty, violence, disadvantage, displacement, and marginalization. Also, we've seen that despite the many programs initiated across the African continent, to enhance youth development. Young people continue to face many challenges that hinder their involvement within the policy and the developmental uh, space. And this can be attributed to societal factors that are associated with cultural values and norms. We will be covering two key areas within module four and that is the youth policies and the development agenda and also evidence-based youth policies. Now, on the right-hand side of the screen, you will see a snapshot of the youth policy process so far in Africa. 32 countries already have their youth policies. They are all listed there. But as at the time, this research was done by the youthpolicy.org, 14 countries do not have policy. So you, we would expect that you, if you are from these countries, you will take this up. Or even if you're not from the country, we will need to develop advocacy, very strong advocacy messages that we encourage these countries to learn from the 32 countries that already have theirs to ensure that we don't only have youth policies, but we implement and monitor the progress made so far when it comes to the youth policies. For Central African Republic and Cote d'Ivoire, they have draft policies in place. And then for Djibouti, Egypt, Guinea, Conakry, Lesotho, Morit Mauritania, and South Sudan, we're not too clear as to the status of their policies. So you've seen that the the 14 countries that do not have policies for young people. And for these six countries that the status of their policy is not clear, we need to undertake intensive advocacy and reach out 
to uh, partner organizations in these countries to say how they can take the lead on this as we prepare to celebrate the 2021 International Youth Day on August 12th. So that this becomes a key issue that will be brought to the front burner of discussions around the Youth Day this year in this country. Leave no one behind is a key principle of 2030 agenda. All individuals, including young people, should be adequately integrated across the implementation of all goals and targets. And so for the United Nations, this means that young people are part of the solution to the difficulties they face, not merely a problem to be resolved by others. As such, the United Nations recognize that young people are right holders and promotes and facilitates transparency, accountability and responsiveness from its member states, international organizations and others geared towards youth development. Therefore, to integrate youth within the development agenda, the United Nations created a special program tagged the United Nations Program on Youth, domiciled in the Department of Economic and Social Affairs, UNDESA, which serves as the focal point on youth in the United Nations and coordinates the participation of youth delegates in the General Assembly of ECOSOC system. ECOSOC Youth Forum was created as a yearly event to give credence and visibility to young people and to ensure that they participate actively within the framework of the United Nations. You can click on the link to get more um, about uh, ECOSOC Youth Forum. We also have two key offices that the UN created in 2013 and 2016 respectively to increase youth accessibility to the United Nations. And these are the offices of the UN Envoy on Youth and the Office of the Special Envoy on Youth Unemployment. By way of definition, youth policy is a deliberate system of principles to guide decisions and achieve concrete outcomes in favor of young people, especially as regards their health, livelihoods, education, leisure, housing, among others. Recognizing the strategic role of young people in development, the United Nations in 1965 endorsed the Declaration on the Promotion Among Youth of the Ideals of Peace, Mutual Respect and Understanding Between Peoples. Principle 3 of that declaration specifically stipulated that young people shall be brought up in the knowledge of the dignity and equality of all men without distinction as to race, color, ethnic origins or beliefs and in respect for fundamental human rights and the rights of peoples to self-determination. Article 12 of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, the UNCRC, as is popularly known, 1989, promotes participation as a substantive right of all children and young people and promotes the principle that young people are entitled to express their views on all matters that affect them and to have those views taken seriously. So you can see that the UNCRC empowers young people to express their views as regards policy making, as regards developmental processes on things that directly or indirectly affect their development. The World Programme of Action for Youth was uh, developed in 1995 and provides an international policy framework and practical guidelines for youth policy development at national and international levels. It has 15 priority areas, including education, employment, hunger and poverty, health, environment, substance abuse, juvenile justice, leisure time activities, girls and young women, 
full and effective participation of youth in the life of society, looking at their social development, and in decision-making, globalization, information and communication technologies. And you remember, we are looking at this now within the context of COVID-19 and digital economy. It also provides for HIV and AIDS, armed conflict and intergenerational issues. The program of Action for Youth serves as a tool for monitoring and tracking youth development in key areas, particularly since the 2012 release of 49 proposed indicators to measure its implementation. You can get more of this by clicking on the link provided below. The 1998 Lisbon Declaration on Youth Policies and Programs is very important because as agreed at the World Conference of Youth Ministers Responsible for Youth Modern Policy Standards for Young People, um, it laid a foundation for modern youth policy standards and specifically enjoined member states to develop national youth policies and operational programs to implement the World Program of Action for Youths while taking into account national priorities, re realities and limitations arising from different socio-economic and cultural development contexts. A very interesting uh, framework for youth development in Africa is the African Youth Decade Plan of Action, DIPOA, 2009 to 2018, which provides a framework to, for multi-sectoral, multi-dimensional engagement of all stakeholders towards the achievement of the goals and objectives of the African Youth Charter. DIPOA will also facilitate more coordinated and concerted actions towards accelerating youth empowerment and development. It provides the background and rationale for declaring the decade for youth by the African Union Assembly in 2009, January, 
It also supports the development of national and regional plans of actions while simultaneously providing a framework that allows coordinated activities across the continent. Hello, welcome to week four of this exciting online course on youth employability and entrepreneurship, the role of digital economy delivered by IDEP of the UNACA based in Dakar, Senegal.
For the case studies, we are looking at uh, African Network of Youth Policy Experts, the AFRINEP, which is a re regional organization that promotes the development and strengthening of youth policies across Africa. AFRINEP was established by African delegates during the first global forum on youth policies that held in 2014. And they have a mandate to enhance advocacy for youth policy implementations and realizations among African countries. They operate as a network that facilitates knowledge development when it comes to youth policies and also advocate for renewed commitment to youth policies, monitoring the level of implementation and impacts in the lives of young people in Africa and promoting data management when it comes to youth. Interestingly, as is with the case of most youth-related networks in Africa, AFRINEP's coverage and scope are still very limited, and uh, this is one of the strong weaknesses that we've seen. And as such, they've not been able to make the desired impact and needs and that it's very important that uh, the, the network is strengthened to continue to deliver on its policy advocacy mandate across Africa. So to get more about uh, the network, um, you can visit the link. Uh, now for your further reading for module four, I invite you to look at the African Development Bank's um, African Economic Outlook 2012 that focuses on promoting youth employment in Africa. The 2015 African Economic Outlook that focuses on regional development and special inclusion. The UNECA's and United Nations Program on Youth 2011 that focuses on regional overview of young people in Africa. And the 2015 UN document that looks at the SDGs, the UNDISA 2017 SDG versus the WPA infographic, measuring youth development through the indicators of the SDGs and the WPA. And of course, the youthpolicy.org that actually documents the various policy uh, that are existing in Africa and the journey so far for their implementation. Now for your assignments in this module, you will be looking at two key policy documents. The first one being the African Union, Africa Youth Charter of 2006 and Africa Agenda 2063 on the Africa we want. And use knowledge gained from studying these two documents and from studying module four, develop five very strong advocacy messages for promoting inclusive youth development within your organization and also in the country that you operate in. And like I said earlier, if you are coming from the, any of the countries that are yet to have your policy in place, it will be very good that uh, you also find a way to circulate your advocacy message to the relevant institutions, aligning it with your participation in this course and as an outflow from this course that is very important that the countries begin to take measures to get the youth policies in place and fully implemented. So submit your assignment to me via email within 48 hours of studying module four. For the group discussions, post your comments as regards um, the question, what are the policy gaps you identified that exist in your organization that hinder youth development? And how do you think your organization can address these gaps? Now see yourself as someone wearing the youth lens and um, put yourself in the shoes of the young people. Think through this. What are the things that young people would have expected to happen to them within the organization that is not happening? One thing you can do is to reach out to the young people. You can develop questionnaire and give to the young people to actually get um, their feedback into this that can help you in your policy um, brief and then the advocacy messaging. 
and then address it to your organization and see the need for, you can recommend, I, I will recommend this strongly, that your organization looks at, uh, if they don't already have this in place, having a youth desk and then a new youth policy in place that ensures that young people are not treated as cheap labor, whether they are staff or volunteers of the organization, and then that they are given opportunities for their voices to be heard, and that they are not just merely participants in the organization, but they are critical stakeholders in the organization. So think of what is very important for young people's development within your organization and what can be done. Realistic Step, remembering the smart approach, being specific, measurable, at, achievable, and realistic, and of course, time bound in whatever advocacy message you are developing. I believe you are now ready to take module four quiz for completing module four. I look forward to seeing you next week as we move to module five. Thank you.